lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm bringing you my TBR for the year of 2021 for the series that I would like to either finish or continue in some way. So I am going to be talking almost exclusively about fantasy and sci-fi today and we're just going to be looking at various series that I have on the go that I'd really like to finish off. I'm notorious for reading book one and then never really getting around to finishing off a series and starting like a billion and one different series on the go and never really getting around to actually kind of tidying up loose ends. So I do have like a big tracker in my bullet journal for general series I have on the go and I'm trying to chip away at it but I'm hoping that this video will be a bit more intentional for let's give myself 12 months from this video being posted but ideally before the end of 2021 I will have read all these books. So let's jump in with the book shall we? I think I've got about eight in total or eight like series in general I want to try and continue with. One that would be finishing it is the uh, Constellation Trilogy and the last book in that is Defy the Fates. This is by Claudia Gray and it's a YA maybe in a um, sci-fi book, it's kind of a space opera and it is about a woman who um, ends up meeting this artificial intelligence program or like robot which is incredibly lifelike and it is about his kind of quest to find out if he has like a soul and whether he is some kind of new um, new step in in kind of technology, can he feel true emotion and kind of the romance that develops between them and also within that he, his creator is on the kind of bad side of this particular intergalactic battle that's going on and she is on the good side and it's about um, him trying to help her to um, find a way to win this big war. Obviously I don't want to say too much about book three in particular but I really enjoy it, I love artificial intelligence in a book, I think it's fascinating as a subject, I love the idea of like what does it mean to be a person and they're quite fun, quite fast paced, relatively light, easy reading and the romance is really kind of central to it so I deeply enjoyed this series. One that is kind of a book one but would technically be continuing a series for me is Battle Mage by Stephen Aaron. So I read uh, Mage Born I think is the title of it which is book one of the second trilogy in this particular world. Now you don't need to have read this first trilogy of which this is actually book one of the first um, but I would like to go back and sort of do it in like like the correct order. I didn't feel like there was anything I was missing out on particularly for book four I guess is the technical or like the first book of the second trilogy. You guys know what I mean. I didn't really feel like I was missing out on any of it. I kind of followed what was going on with the plot but I would like to kind of do it in the correct order for lack of a better term. Um, this is about a world where magic is um, like kind of shunned and sort of and um, looked down upon and the first trilogy is about a really epic battle and it's like a big war going on and then book four was actually focused on more of like a cold war 20 years later after the war and this uneasy truce that's happened between the magical people and the non-magical people of this world um, and the kind of spy and espionage stuff that was going on. I really enjoyed it, I found the magic system quite fascinating, there's almost this kind of web concept to it which is very cool um, so I would like to jump in from the very very beginning and really kind of sink into the world building a bit more so hopefully gonna get to this one, been on my shelf for a little while, really do need to actually do it. One that I am unbelievably psyched that I finally have a hold of a copy of is the Blood Bowl Quartet. Is that what we call quadrology? Yeah, four books um, by Matt Forbeck. So Blood Bowl is actually a weird subsection of Warhammer and was originally based off of either a video game or a board game or a mixture of both. This is a <laughs> four book series about the kind of game concept and also kind of some characters placed in this world. And it's kind of Lord of the Rings meets American football with way more gore and violence and I absolutely adore it. I read the first three books when I was a teenager because my mate had them and I borrowed them off of him but then since then they went out of print you could only find them like very occasionally in libraries I read book one a couple of years ago because I happened to stumble across it but they finally reprinted them all in a huge bind up including the book four that I never managed to get to so I definitely want to do a reread because I reread book one so recently it literally was only like three years ago I think it was just before starting my YouTube channel um, I probably won't be starting fully from the beginning which is why I'm considering this a continuation of a series I'm going to jump in with book two because I do remember that one fairly like book one fairly recently um, but it's so much fun utterly ridiculous fantastic another book that will be finishing a series is the uh, Rosewater trilogy and that will be the Rosewater Redemption by Tade Thompson this is a fantastic sci-fi series set in Nigeria in the like 
in 2050 I think or 2060 and it is about this alien biodome that has appeared and um, can both miraculously heal people at certain points of the year but also has kind of triggered all of this kind of latent psychic ability in a bunch of people and heightened it and made it um, more powerful and it's something that the government has harnessed and book one is sort of a dual timeline focusing on a particular character who has Karu I believe his name is who has a psychic ability and then something is happening that is taking out all of the psychics and he's not too sure why obviously the book continues the series continues and I don't want to talk too much about this one in particular but I really enjoy the series I think it's got some ridiculously cool ideas it's really fast-paced and fun and I read book two back in February and absolutely like devoured it in a couple of days so it'd be fantastic to actually finish this trilogy off I picked this up recently when i was in waterstones on a bit of a whim being like well if i own it then i'm more likely to finish it so it's fine one that i haven't read in a little while but i would be really excited to get back to or one that's definitely got more of a historical slump than the rest of these uh books on this list is andrew caldecott wintertide this is the river roth series i believe or trilogy the first one is called i can't remember and i can't see it on my shelf oh we'll never know Oh, Rotherweird. There we go. It's just behind me. The first one's called Rotherweird. Basically, it's a historical fiction about this little village that has been separated and isolated from the rest of the community for a really, really long period of time. And it's kind of following a dual timeline of, I think, in the time of Queen Elizabeth, where this initial kind of se separation off from society happens. And then in the, like early 1900s of this gentleman coming into town who's an outsider and him trying to discover what's going on it's fun it's quirky it's got kind of a mad scientist vibe to it it's got a real like island of dr moreau thing going on there's a whole cast of characters it was really really interesting playing around with some cool ideas of again what it does it mean to be a person and it left itself on a little bit of a cliffhanger so i'm really curious about wintertide now full confession it has been a couple of years since i read rather weird i'm a little hazy on it so i'll probably have to like wikipedia the plot before i jump in with this one um but it's so stunning and again like i really need to actually continue this and then hopefully follow, finish the trilogy because it is a trilogy that's book two now i've got kind of two series that i would like to continue but i can see me only actually continuing with one of them at some point in the year one is the lady astronaut series by mary robinette Cowell, which i was supposed to continue in april and it didn't just it didn't quite happen and this one is about if the space race in the 1950s was actually really motivated by an asteroid strike that was essentially going to wipe out um the entirety of humanity in some like massive sort of climate change event so we're trying to colonize the stars so that that way we have somewhere to live um book one is about the space race and getting up into space book two is kind of a, like a decade or so on afterwards and like how are we doing there and book three again is another chunk of time afterwards about like the next step so i'm really interested to get to book three and see how it goes i think there might even be a book four i don't think it is a trilogy i think it does continue i really like it i think the science that it does checks out really well and i do like um sci-fi books that are more immediately about our like immediate space travel so think like your andy ware type books as well and i think it does a really good job with that and it's also talking about a lot of interesting kind of social justice things that were happening at the time book one definitely focused quite a lot on feminism and book two focused a lot on racism so i'm kind of intrigued by book three it can be a little heavy-handed in places but i really enjoyed some of the character development of book two as well so i definitely want to jump back in and then the other one that like fulfills a similar kind of um reading mood niche shall we say is the invisible library series by genevieve cogman this is a just absolutely like roller coaster ride of a book series i think i would be on book four now i can't remember the name i'll put it here whatever the one is that i'm kind of most recently up to and basically it's about an inter like a library that exists like in an interdimensional world where they are some of the like mediating force between chaos and order and chaos is represented by the fairies and order is represented by dragons and instances of popular classic books can help to kind of ground these worlds across the various parallel universes and we follow our main character who evie maybe evelyn something like that and she um she's trying to keep the balance and then there's also sort of this kind of budding romance going on with her apprentice kai who's definitely more than he seems it's they're they're like absolutely wild books and they're the kind of books that when you finish them you think back on the plot and you're like did that even make sense but you had such a good time whilst you were reading it that you didn't really care so that one I would quite like to continue at some point too and then I think so I've got a couple of graphic novel series on the go and I would just like to read two more graphic novels this year because I'm notorious for not picking up graphic novels mainly because they're expensive so now that libraries are starting to reopen again I might see if my local library has any of the graphic novels that I currently got on the go I think I have four 
that I need to kind of try and wrap up at some point. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but I'd like to read two more graphic novels before the end of the year and like slowly chip away a bit at them because they have been going on forever. And then the final one I'd like to make a real dent into is the Animorphs reread that I'm doing by K.A. Applegate. This is a middle grade series from like the mid 90s, I think, early 2000s kind of vibe. Basically, it's about five kids who um, find an alien like in a in a construction site who then gives them the ability to morph into other animals once they've like touched them and kind of absorbed their DNA. And it turns out Earth is the battleground for an amazing epic war between the Andalites who are the good aliens and the Yerks who are the bad aliens who are trying to enslave humanity. And it's all secretly hush hush going on. And the Animorphs, which is what they call themselves, these five kids basically have to try and like hold down the fort until more of the Andalite army can arrive and actually help them save the day. It's really fun and there's like 50 books in the series and I think I'm on book 27 maybe. So I'd like to manage to inch up to actually the 30s and kind of feel like I'm fully over the halfway mark with this particular series. Um, frustratingly, I'm in this section where there was a ghostwriter for a while or a couple of different ghostwriters as K.A. Applegate got a bit big and was doing other things. And you definitely notice like a drop in quality, but I'm hoping if I can just power through them and then get to the bit where K.A. Applegate actually gets involved again, that would be really good. So. I think that is all of the uh, series that I would like to either continue or finish hopefully this year but I'm giving myself a 12 month leeway wiggle room and if I don't get to any of them it's okay because this is a hobby that I do for fun so I don't owe you anything um, so yeah let me know have you read any of these have you finished any of these do you have series on the go at the moment that you're like I really really need to finish that like I'm so bad at doing it I just I don't know what it is about continuations of series that I find so like unmotivating to try and read. So yeah, let me know everything in the comments down below and where do you think I should start? Have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.